Look at this. Santiago has brought some new toys to bludgeon snow with. Once again, guys, I am full on in my pajamas, but that's just my life here lately. So I'm assuming these are probably some kind of tension bands. Yes, we've actually used one of them once before, but this looks much more difficult. Walk. Okay. Santiago have developed a sign language and sound effects. So hoo 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 means it's poofy. Rear 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 means it's throbbing. <laughs> it works. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> Can I give y'all a little bit more detail on what's going on with the knee recovery and the physical therapy and my pain levels? So part of this recovery, and one thing I have learned, is this is a very long and intense recovery. It is a pretty major surgery. They literally saw the bones, um, the tip of your thigh bone and the tip of your calf bone, and insert some metal into them and lots of screws, and manipulate the ligaments and the muscles and the tissue. So one of the main pain causers, for lack of a better word, when you're starting to heal up is the scar tissue. So apparently there's several layers of fascia or muscle and ligaments, skin, all sorts of stuff. And they stack up on top of each other like paper. So picture like three pieces of paper. And then when that scar tissue starts to develop, it will fuse those pieces of paper together. But you don't need that. You need them to move. Everything needs to slide because the knee is so mobile. So one of the things that I have to do several times throughout the day is for five to 10 minutes, I literally have to massage the scar. Now the first few days, this was painful, but now it actually feels pretty good. Uh, and, and the reason you do that is you don't want the scar tissue to start fusing those layers together. So you have to move the layers and you have to do it often. If you don't, the knee's gonna get where it won't bend because that scar tissue starts to heal so tightly. Another big pain causing factor is when they manipulate um, all the muscles and ligaments and they have to pull them out of the way and cut and put some of them back together in order to get to the actual knee joint. Uh, there's a lot of pain there where they're just pulled and tugged and you can't move them too good, so it's difficult to work out that soreness and pain. So I have discovered a way to do that. Now most people do this with a rolling pin, but we don't have one, but I found this cardboard thing and I can roll them out almost like a foam roller at a gym. And then so you have that behind the knee and on the side of the knee. Now in the middle of the thigh, hold on, airplane flying over. 
so you have the tightness of the ligaments and muscles on the back of the knee and the side of the knee. Now right in the middle of the thigh, during the surgery, they place a tourniquet because apparently this is a pretty bloody surgery. And um, so they put a tourniquet on your thigh and that damages your thigh muscles. And again, it's hard to, at the beginning of your recovery to move those and stretch those really good. So the same thing when those muscles start to heal up, there is a lot of scar tissue in there. So you have to roll that out. So one of my favorite things, and I wish I would have discovered it sooner, is this rolling thing. So I do a lot of massaging and a lot of rolling and a lot of lotioning to keep the scar from uh, drying up too much because then it's hard to bend the knee because it pulls. But that's kind of what's going on. And that is my responsibility because when I go to physical therapy and when, I, when Santiago comes here for the at-home physical therapy, we don't do that. You know, we concentrate on balance, bending, strength, and that sort of stuff. So recovery for knee replacement surgery is kind of like a full-time job. And to be really honest with you guys, the mental side of this has been extremely difficult. You'll have a couple of really good days and then all of a sudden you'll walk too far, bend too far. Well, I don't even know what causes it, not massage it enough, but you have a really bad day. So yesterday, last night, really bad night, and you honestly just can't even control your emotions. I lay in the bed and cry because the pain's so bad and there's nothing to do to stop it. And um, it really messes with your head. And so I joined that Facebook support group and I see that that is a very normal thing. In fact, 99% of the people in that group say it's happened to them just for no reason. But Kurt has been incredibly understanding with my emotional roller coaster ups and downs. And we will get through this, guys. It is getting better and better every day. All right, guys. We are out for another walk. We're going to try to go eat lunch. The other day we went for the walk with just the cane and I think it was a little too much, probably just because I'm afraid because it still feels so unstable. I got pretty tired on that walk. So for this walk, I out, brought out the trusty Gator Blue walker again. Um, and I gotta be honest guys, the past few days have been uh, not so great. Uh, the pain has been pretty intense a couple of days, but I did some research. I found a support group on Facebook. And that's kind of just part of the healing process and nothing to be worried about. So I had a few really good days, followed by some pretty crappy days. Uh, but I gotta keep moving. So I'm not feeling 100% today, but we're gonna go get lunch, okay? So let's go, guys. <laughs> It's not your fault and you don't deserve All the bad and the hurt So getting this done in another country has had its uh, perks, its cons. One of the biggest cons is, at least here in Colombia and probably in a lot of international countries, there are no ADA standards. There are no handicap ramps, no requirements for smooth sidewalks. But it just means I have to be a little bit more careful where I walk and how I walk here. There's still plenty of width, but there's some bumpy areas. But uh, it's all good. And one more thing. We had a lot of you guys tell me that I should have got the walker with the wheels on it. And we went back and forth. And mainly it was a size thing, but going back to the no handicap standards, wheels would be really terrible on these sidewalks and roads. So we did the right thing. We appreciate all the suggestions, but in hindsight, we made the right choice. Mm -hmm. I know you tried so hard. Mm -hmm. I know you've done your part. It's not fair You did your time How much longer will you suffer in this life With 
don't give up Just hold on tight It'll be alright All right, we have some chicken wings, some alitas before our pizza. <laughs> and what's cool down here in Columbia, they always give you these little gloves with your wings, which That's is nice. So nice. How's it feel to be outside? Oh, guys, it feels really good to be outside. It was quite a walk, my longest walk yet, but just worth it. The sun's out, it's just a nice day. <laughs> All right, those wings were good and tender, but what do we have here, Snow? Oh, we got cheesy, cheesy pizza. And we've had pizza here before, so we know it's really good. And they put corn on it. It was so good here, guys. Look at that. And it's not incredibly healthy, but it is loaded with vegetables, a little bit of meat. And believe it or not, there's not that much cheese on it. So as far as pizzas go, it's not greasy. It's not really bad. And I'm fixing to dig in. <laughs> so lunch was a big success. On the way back to the apartment, which is about a two and a half block walk here, two and a half blocks back. So I did five blocks, but there is a pastry shop here. And Kurt is grabbing us some stuff. Okay. All right, I'm calling that a very successful walk. Probably the most successful one we've had so far. I made it back without being really, really tired. And I'm fixing to get on the ice machine to kind of fight any swelling that may happen for that. I'm feeling good about that walk, guys. But I wanted to tell you guys. One, you've seen how incredible Kurt's been. I don't need to tell y'all everything he's been doing. He has been 100% taking care of us, uh, the legalities of keeping the van here, the shopping, the kitties, uh, shuffling me back and forth to the hospital, and just literally waiting on me hand and foot. And as I'm getting better, I'm trying really hard to do more and more on my own. And now we've got it to a point where I am good here in the apartment. I can take care of myself, which means you guys know Kurt's been able to get out and do some adventures. But what you guys don't know, and I'm so excited about this because he totally needs a break from me and from taking care of me, but Kurt's lifelong friend from when he was a little kid in school is coming down from the States for a visit. So he'll be here. I don't know if he'll be here for the next video, but he will for maybe the next one. And Kurt is gonna get to, he'll make sure I'm set up here at the apartment, but he's gonna get to get out and about, cut up, have some fun with his really good friend, Todd. And uh, I'm super excited because he needs that break. And then um, you guys are gonna get to see him have a little bit of fun with a buddy here. So just wanted to give y'all a heads up. That's coming and it's a really good thing. Good morning, guys. Big surprise, we are back at the hospital. But this morning's appointment is something completely different. <laughs> we are taking advantage of being in one spot for a long time and getting some routine health stuff done. So this morning, I'm going for a very fun and exciting mammogram. Booby squish. <laughs> but reminder, everybody get your mammograms. It's super important. So we're doing that this morning. We're gonna see Stephanie here in just a minute. And then we'll go back to the apartment and come back this afternoon for a hospital physical therapy appointment. But I'm kind of excited because I want them to do my measurements on my range of motion because I think I've made good improvements. But we'll see this afternoon. So today we got here before Stephanie. So this is the first time we're attempting to check in and pay and everything on our own. So snow's up there with the Google Translate. She's a little wobbly, but she's moving. It's definitely a little harder up the ramp. Okay guys, we've paid for the mammogram and now we've walked up the steep ramp to where we wait to actually get the mammogram. But I gotta tell you guys, it costs 65,500 Colombian pesos, which 
is around 17 US dollars. $17 for a mammogram. Okay, mammogram went really good. We got some, I think I'm gonna call it good news when we were there. Uh, one of the things we still need to revisit while we're here and I'm going through the rehab is the internist, the doctor, she wanted to try to figure out why I was having the low iron issues. So one of the things she ordered once I got to feeling better was an endoscopy um, to see if I had anything going on in here that could be causing the iron issue. And we've been struggling to get it scheduled. And then today, while we were at the hospital doing the mammogram, Stephanie comes up and says, they can do it today. So we've made it back to the hospital for our afternoon time here. Physical therapy is in a few minutes and I was not able to take the pain medicine that I would normally take before physical therapy because we've got that endoscopy that was surprise scheduled this afternoon. So we're gonna have to see how that goes. But spending the whole day at the hospital, guys, not a ton of excitement, but like Kurt has showed y'all before, at least this is a very pretty hospital to have to hang out at so much in one day. And Kurt is here with me. Anything to add, Curdy? No, it's hurry up and wait, but today we're definitely getting a laundry list of items done, which is kind of nice because it saves back and forth. We did do one back and forth with Fabian, our driver, who's been amazing. But yeah, it's a nice day to be hanging outside. We can hear the birds, so every little thing's going to be all right. <laughs> okay, guys, physical therapy is done, but we did not film any of it today, and there's two reasons. One, a few of the physical therapists are out with COVID, so there's a shortage. So there was five people in my workout room instead of three, so it was very crowded. And two of them were having a very difficult session, kind of like mine that was really bad last week. So we just wanted to give everybody as much privacy as we could. Today was not so terrible as far as pain goes. We were working on balance. She had me stepping over these big giant balls. But uh, now we are headed to go get an endoscopy on our whirlwind day. What a fun day, <laughs> huh guys? <laughs> so we'll see y'all in a little bit. Sorry we couldn't share the physical therapy with you guys today, but it was the right thing. Everybody say hello to our favorite person, Stephanie. <laughs> She's just amazing, guys. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Endoscopy is done. It went pretty smooth. Um, we're paying now, and then we'll leave. And they did find some stuff that they think may need some more testing. So we're not done yet, guys. But that's okay, because we're here in Medellin with an apartment. So we might as well get it all fixed while we're here. So time to go home. A little bit groggy from the anesthesia. So I'll probably take a nap. All right, a little maintenance going on in front of the apartmento today. They're trimming this tree. We look right outside this thing and watch the birds. But you can see the big mess. So here we go, up the hill. You need my shoulder? I'm okay. Wow. <laughs> Through the wind, I storming, breaking like the tide. Every time, a bit dizzy, I close my eyes. So it's windy, really windy out here. You can see the trees just blowing up there. And that guy's all the way in the top. Oh.
So we had that tied off. They did a nice job of letting that down, nice and smooth. But he sawed that up there. You can see he's all the way up there on the top. It's a pretty big, uh, big tree. This one's leaning up against the building. So he's dropped the chainsaw now. He's cutting this one by hand.
If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!